massage is really interesting. It's a traditional, it translates actually to ancient um, body work or ancient massaged in Thai. And it was developed centuries ago and it runs, um, the healing and the, the technique um, is to apply pressure, just like massage, on certain parts of the body. But what it does follow, and I think this is kind of an interesting thing, is that it, it follows the same lines along the body, so the subtle body, the energetic body, um, as the Chinese meridians or the um, Indian nadis. And I thought, oh, they're not just making up where you kind of run your hands, and they're not running just anatomical spots in the body, which is what I find um, is really interesting about Swedish massage is it's very technical, it's very anatomical, which is fantastic. So if you have that kind of background and you come to Thai massage, you just add a whole layer of experience to that. So running these lines and releasing um, not just muscle tension and aches, but also really delving into the subtle body and the acknowledgement that the body, spirit, and the mind are not separate, but in fact you heal them all together and unblocking channels of um, energy through the Sen lines, which is what they call it in Thai massage. I went to my therapist, um, Thai massage therapist actually, I said, I really want you to open up my thoracic spine. It's very technical, isn't it? I just want you to open it up because I want to reach back into my great big ekapada, you know, I want to grab my foot or go into my supreme natarajasana because I just wanted to hit that foot. And I thought, that's all I need. I just need you to open up my thoracic spine. It's a physical issue. And he said, when you're ready, because now is a really busy time, and it might not be the best time for you to open this up. So when you have time to work through things emotionally, you come and see me. Because actually, I don't think your tightness ex exists in the body. I think it exists in your emotions and your heart. Because if you think about where the thoracic spine exists, which is this, this zone on your back, it's the backside of your heart. And so he didn't even think about it in a physical way. His therapy for me was to say, if you open up your heart, which includes the back side, then you'll find what you're looking for. And it never occurred to me that the emotional release and the, and, and the emotions we hang on to are manifest, manifested in the body somehow. And then and opening those parts up will trigger lots of emotional releases that you didn't even know that you were carrying. Thai massage is very different from other forms of massage um, practiced typically in North America. Um, so North Americans are, t are used to stripping their clothes down, getting onto a table, being covered with a sheet, having oils rubbed on them to relieve aches and pains and you know, muscle tension. Thai massage is typically or traditionally practiced on a mat on the floor. My mat happens to be about 8 by 8 feet. Lots of pillows and propping because North American bodies are not as open as a lot of Asian bodies where cultures um, who squat, have open hips, are used to sitting on the floor. Um, they just, North American bodies typically lack the same kind of mobility. So, Translating a practice for a body type that's typically hypermobile, for a body that sits at a desk, drives a car, reads books, texts, um, is, is an interesting kind of practice all on its own. And on this mat, people are fully dressed, comfortable clothes, long pants, a t-shirt, there's um, a lot of modesty in Asian cultures as well, so I think there's a real reverence to observing a person's modesty and not sort of being invasive on where you massage them. Um, what we call 
the connection of a practitioner and a receiver in Thai massage is a pairing. And that pairing is always unique to those two individuals and the energy for the period that they're, being, that they're sharing that massage. Because it's equally therapeutic for the practitioner as it is for the receiver to enter into that massage and say, together we're going to find healing and release tension and pain. Um, my observation, so this is purely opinion, is that Swedish massage or some of the tabletop massage um, methodologies don't really look at mobility in the same context of massage, whereas Thai massage always involves rotations of joints and really opens um, the space between the joints, spinal tractions, leg tractions, uh, twists. So it's a passive yoga class on a mat. We stretch, we forward bend, we twist. Um, there are all, all manner of poses that we can incorporate. I would say the only thing that we probably don't do is a balance. <laughs> But otherwise, uh, you really do get most of the components of a, a full yoga class on the mat. The one unique part, I would say, is the connection or the pairing between practitioner and the receiver and the fact that it's practiced on the floor. The number one thing is called sensing. So we have the most nerve endings on our hands and our lips. So we don't use our lips, we use our hands. And as we practice, so that. Uh, Thai massage practice starts at the feet. Um, the general philosophy is that if what happens from the waist down is aligned, then everything that's happening waist up will correct because the foundation of the body is realigned and everything is running smoothly that has a real impact on the top, top part of the body, the upper part of the body. So we start at the feet and we massage through the feet. And as we move through the body, there's um, a thing, I guess, that we do that's called sensing. And as you run your hands over a body, um, some people have, so this is kind of an interesting thing about body workers. Some people have more heightened sensing and other people need to develop it over years. It's one of those fuzzy areas that over time, I suppose it's much like teaching yoga. Some people have an intuition on how to provide a correction for a student that just hits it and you think wow that changed that pose for me and everything happened so the same thing happens in Thai massage you will have a pairing um, with somebody and you'll think how did they possibly know they must have radar to go exactly where I just don't feel well and release that it's a combination of the pairing so how well that, that body wants to open up to you and how open you are to that body. It has to do with the practitioner's ability to keep that open channel to allow the body to tell you what it needs. And so when I prepare for a Thai massage, we have some metta prayers or some loving kindness prayers that we recite, that I recite. Um, I don't know if everybody else has their own. But I always recite that may we practice with open hearts and open minds, um, that we can receive and give. And then my metta prayer when I'm actually touching my um, client or my receiver will be, we pray for those we touch, that they're happy, healthy, joyful, and that illness is released from their bodies. And so I cease bringing in my own ego and my own expectations so that I can serve that body well. And I think that's where that comes from, is just having the openness to say, allow your body to tell me what you need so that I can give you what you need. And I think in listening to that, that's where the person finds release. It may not have anything to do with the fact that I've twisted their arm and released all this tension in their shoulders. Maybe all they needed was somebody's hands on them in a loving way to say, I care about what you feel like and I want you to leave happy. I think sometimes the pain is just loneliness. 
sometimes the pain is a real pain, like they've had an injury. But why they come, or why they, I, maybe it's why they continue to come for a Thai massage and why it's different, is that there is already an emotional and spiritual level infused into the practice, whereas I think in other body work, it's separate. It's either body work or you're going to meditation or yoga for other purposes. But this meshes and infuse, infuses really body, mind, spirit. And then if you layer onto that the idea of a subtle body and energy lines and the emotions we carry in different parts of our bodies, like the quads are said to hold anger and agitation and the hips hold pain and sorrow. When you start opening those things up, you provide release for, for people who bottle things up and maybe don't have words to express it, but you give them a sense of letting go without them having to utter a word, without them having to feel unsafe, 